Hello everyone and welcome back. We continue our discussion of block ciphers. Uh, today we are going to see three block ciphers in depth. These are called present, des, and AES. So let's start. If you remember, we kind of tried to uh, categorize cryptographic algorithms. We said that some algorithms that do not have any keys, so we call them keyless cryptographic algorithms. I think the best example is hash functions. Uh, keyed algorithms can be divided into two, symmetric key and asymmetric key cryptography. And actually, block ciphers is a part of the secret key cryptography, or in other words, symmetric key cryptography. So secret key algorithms use the same key material for both encryption and decryption, as we give the name symmetric key cryptography. There are three types of algorithms in this category, block ciphers, stream ciphers, and message authentication codes. So we will see all of them in this course, uh, but we started with block ciphers, then we will move on to stream ciphers and message authentication codes. So if you remember, block ciphers and stream ciphers are encryption primitives, while the message authentication code is used for data and data origin authentication. But these three topics are not completely distinct. Uh, we can use a block cipher to build both a stream cipher and a message authentication code. We can even build a hash function. So all of them will make sense, most probably at the end of the course. Asymmetric key crypto systems are somewhat different. They have different types of algorithms. For example, they include key agreement algorithms. So we will see different on key exchange at the end of this course. But we also have public key encryption algorithms like RSA, or we have digital signature algorithms. But we are in the symmetric crypto system now. So ideas as follows. We have a secret key and it is used for both encryption and decryption. So this key is used for encryption and decryption are identical or closely related. In other words, one can be obtained from the other in polynomial type. But this won't be the case in asymmetric key cryptography because you won't be able to get the private key from the public key. So a little bit reminder, block ciphers operate on B-bit blocks of data. So plain text is divided into B-bit blocks. Each block is encrypted by a K-bit secret key to produce B-bit output. Output blocks form the ciphertext, but how it is done actually depends on the mode of operation, which will be the topic of the following weeks. But uh, so in uh, before we think about mode of operation or uh, before thinking about how to encrypt uh, data that is larger than the block size, let's simply focus on the uh, ciphers itself. We just take the B-bits input and provide B-bit output. So uh, this lecture, we will just be focusing on the algorithm itself. So we're just assuming there's only a single block to encrypt and we will be encrypting it with present S and AES. But uh, we will talk about mode of operations in the following weeks. So a block cipher and the chosen key is actually a permutation from 2B elements to 2B elements. And nowadays we choose the B, I mean the block size is 64 bits or 128 bits. So you get like eight bytes or 16 bytes. But of course there are some lightweight cryptographic algorithms that has shorter block sizes like 32 bits and so on. And uh, now, nowadays we use the key length as 128 bits, 192 bits or 256 bits. You can actually we have uh, algorithms that use shorter keys, but uh, we don't recommend uh, using a key that is shorter than 128 bits actually. And block size is somewhat also import important because if you're if you use a block cipher that has a very small block size like 32 bits or even less, then this means that you need to change your key frequently. Otherwise you will be leaking a lot of information. So let's start with a concrete example. Let's start with the present cipher. Present is a block cipher, but it is also an ISO IEC standard for lightweight cryptography. So this standard has two algorithms. One of them is present, the other one is uh, Clavia. And present is an SPN cipher, Clefi is a phase style cipher. So this algorithm is designed in, uh, I think, 2007, if I'm not mistaken. But it is uh, 
it is a very simple structure. So actually we can uh, define the whole cipher in a single slide, almost. So let's start with it. So the block size is 64 bits. This is why every line in this figure represents a single bit. Key length is either 8 bits or 128 bits. Actual choices depends on the user, but again, as I said before, it's always a good idea to use longer keys. And it doesn't give you much if you choose 80-bit keys because uh, the key schedule for this cipher isn't that different. So you don't get, a, you get a negligible slowdown if you move to 128 bits from using 80 bits in the cipher. And we have 31 runs for this cipher. So let's look at what is going on. Uh, from the key schedule algorithm, you get round keys, which we'll be seeing in the next slide. So I assume that you have your uh, initial round key here. So your block is XOR to the 64 bits of the round key. So after this XOR operation, uh, the 64 bits uh, data is uh, divided into 16 parts. So you get uh, four bits data here, 16 many of them, and all of them are put uh, inside an S box and you get a four bit output too. So the definition of this S box is given here. So in hexadecimal notation, it is defined like this. So there can be 16 different inputs. So you get the same output in a different order. So you can see it as a permutation. So this is the confusion layer of the cipher. You repeat it 16 times. But again, we mentioned this before. This does not provide much diffusion because four bits affect four bits, but it doesn't affect the uh, other bits. For this reason, you have a permutation layer here. So for instance, leftmost bit goes to itself, but this one goes here, this one goes there and so on. So this is your single round. So after one round, take the 64 bits, put it here and repeat the same procedure 31 times. At the end, you will have a final key exon. So this is the structure from the uh, standards or from the paper that says where the, the cipher is defined, you can see the permutation layers. So you can see in a table which bit actually map to which bit. So this is the uh, main picture. So let's look at the uh, key schedule. So for the 8-bit key, key schedule is defined like this. So you have a master key, which is 8 bits. So we define them as from key 79 to key 0. So all of them are bits here. And round keys are actually the leftmost 64 bits of the master key. So you are keeping the master key as a register so, and take this 64, leftmost 64 bit as your initial round key, then perform some operations on this register and each round take the leftmost 64 bits again. So idea is as follows. Initially, you have your secret key, 80 bits. Leftmost 64 bits is your uh, initial round key, then this 80 bits register K is rotated uh, 19 bits to the right. So this is why K19 becomes K0. Then leftmost four bits are put inside the S box. So you kind of provide some kind of a, a confusion here. Then you XOR the round counter to these five bits. So round counter means that actually the number of the round. So at the first round, round counter is one. At the second, it is two. At the third, it is three, and so on. So at the final round, it is 31. And if you think in hexadecimal notation, sorry, in bitwise notation, 31 is actually five uh, bits of one. So this is why you are exoring to these five bits. So it is a very simple key schedule. It is very easy to implement. And uh, now let's look at the key schedule of 128 bit key. So instead of this one, if you choose your present key length as 128 bits, you do a similar thing. You again have a register where you 
uh, record your master key, which is this time 128 bits. And again, leftmost fourth 64 bits is your round key. But each round you perform some operations on this um, register K. So what you do is, as you can see, it is rotated to write 67 bits. Then you perform an SBox operation on the leftmost uh, four bits here and the following four bits here. So this time you are performing two SBox operations instead of one here. And finally, you add the round counter again, but in instead of these five bits, you are adding it to these five bits. So almost the same, only the drawback is now you have to perform one more SBox operation. Of course, in terms of uh, in software, this is not important, but in the hardware, now instead of storing 80 bits, you have to store 128 bits. So you need a longer register or more registers, let's say. So it is very simple. Let's see how it affects the encryption. So let's look at the key schedule of 80 bit key. Again, remember that you have a rotation, an SBox operation, and round counter exo. So let's see what happens if I choose my 80 bit key as all zeros. So this is an hexadecimal notation. So every zero actually represents four bits, which are zero to them. So this is 20 zeros here. So we said that first round key is the leftmost 64 bits, which are all zero. Now you perform the key schedule operation. So you rotate this 19 bits to the right, but since all of them are zero, it becomes the same. And what you do is, is to perform an SBox operation to the leftmost four bits. So if we go back, we will see that the SBox operation says that if your input is zero, it is C. So your 80 bit register becomes C0000. Then you add the round counter, which doesn't affect it in the initially. So your second round key is just C000. For the third round key, you perform these operations again. You perform the rotation SBox operation and round counter XOR. So in the third round key, it becomes something like this. And if you follow these steps in this way, as you can see, it's becoming a little bit more random, but as you can see, I deliberately chose the whole key as zero to show you that even after 11 rounds of uh, operations, there are a lot of zeros appear here to show you that the confusion and diffusion layers of the key schedule are not that good. But this is a deliberate choice because this is a lightweight algorithm. Uh, you have to make a trade-off between security and performance. So to gain performance, they have to choose a very simple key schedule algorithm. So if you continue in this way, this is the whole list of round keys you get. So we have 31 rounds, but we also have a final round key XOR. So this is why we have 32 different values here. So this is your key schedule algorithm. And this is actually a test vector for you. So if you want to implement this cipher, uh, this can help you to check if you implement the key schedule algorithm correctly. So next step is now we have the key schedule. Let's, what, let's see what happens if we encrypt something with present. So assume that I want to encrypt the plain text block, 64 bits, which are all zero with the key that is also all zero because we already seen the key schedule for all this uh, key. So initially what you get is this. Let's go back and see why this happens. Let's look at the picture. So our plain text block is all zero. Our first round key is also all zero. So if you XOR them, you get all zeros here. So all of the SBox inputs are zero. Output has to be C. So you get C, 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 C 16 times here. And if you think what C is, it is 12 in, in the, as an integer. But if you write it as a, in, uh, as a binary, so it becomes 1100. Zero, zero. So you get 1100, 1100, and so on and so forth. But the permutation uh, layer actually takes the rightmost two bits to the uh, right part of the cipher and leftmost two bits to the left part of the cipher. So after this operation, you get 31 ones here, so 32 ones here, and remaining 32 bits become zero. So this is why after the first round of encryption, 
the round output becomes uh, 32 bits that are one and 32 bits that are zero. If you continue in this way, so you perform the round key XOR, uh, Sbox operation and permutation layer, your second round output is this, third round is this, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, and 11. As you can see, this uh, redundancy in the plain text and the key uh, start to be lost after we encrypted a few more runs, contrary to the key schedule, because the confusion and diffusion layers of the encryption algorithm is somewhat better than the key schedule algorithm. So if you continue in this way, this is the output at the end of the 31 rounds. So you exhort it with your last round key. So this is the cipher text below. So this is very important. Again, this is a test vector for people who want to uh, implement this algorithm because uh, cryptographic algorithms are not something every computer scientist uh, implements daily. So these algorithms are somewhat different. They work on bits and so on. So it is very hard to implement it correctly in your first try. So this is why we have this kind of uh, test vector so that you can check if your implementation is correct or not. So this is just an example for an encryption of a single block with an 80-bit key uh, using the present algorithm. And this will be the ciphertext block that you will get at the end if you implement this algorithm correctly. 